Hello, so I've got something a bit different from usual today. So a few months ago I was looking at the junk auctions in Yahoo, one of the best ways to waste time, and um, I came across some retro audio players. So today I'll be looking at these old tape deck and um, analyzing them. So first one here, it looks like TRK is the brand, no, Hitachi Perdisco. Um, it says Bluetooth, someone's added a Bluetooth chip into it, which is really cool. It's an early 80s unit, massive thing with, what are they, probably 12 inch speakers and two tweeters, tape deck, equalizer, and um, start price is 60,000 yen, which is about $1,000, probably 1,100 Australian. Um, can't read kanji, so I don't know what the second one is. This one here, Sony CFS W600. This is a very popular unit in Japan. They've been going for around $300 for the red ones, a bit less for the black ones. Very cool, got a handle on top of the Sony logo, equalizer, a and B tapes and satellite speakers. Now this one, National 3 tape player. It's quite interesting, I've never seen a 3 cassette player before on the 1 and 2. Um, let's scroll down a bit, sharp, sharp. Um, boombox white with um, blue accents and silver face. Equalizer in the front, two tape decks, massive speakers and tweeters at the top. That's quite cool, retro old thing here, National, Nationaru. Um, What's next? Toshiba Sugar. Now this is one of my favorite ones. So Toshiba isn't actually known as a great sounding brand or great quality, but they know how to make their tape players look really good. So I'm a big fan of their designs. Sony, Sonyo, uh, Sony again, giant speakers with tweeters built in. Here's another one, Sugar SF5. This is actually one of my favorite models, um, except I don't really like them in blue. I like them in the creamy yellow color or black. Um, what's this one? Sharp giant four speaker unit, two tape decks. Go down a bit, another sharp one. So this is a very popular model to see, the um, U4S. Um, the twin tape version is called the WU4S. See all is just U4S. They um, look really good. Usually they go for a high price because people want them. Sharpers. Um, it's sort of a good brand, but I'd actually say that Iowa and Sony are the top two. We have here Sony, massive um, speakers and nice tinted glass on the top. And Victor over here. So Victor, that's quite an interesting brand. They actually had a cool unit that um, I'll probably show you later. I found it here, Sony. So let's take a look at this one. I'll talk about this one soon. Another U4, this one's a T, so a yeah, later model. Let's go down a bit more. Hitachi, so it's a nice looking um, satellite speaker unit, twin tape equalizer, and VZV2 by Sharp. This one's actually got a cult following. Um, let's actually take a look at it now. Wait, look at Toshiba because it's one of my favorite brands what's over here some pretty cool retro looking things hey look it's an SF4 I haven't actually seen one of those before and um, this one looks like an SW6 or SW3 very synthwave look to it I'll open that SX3 this is one that I wanted but they're quite heavy and shipping would be horrendous and hey look catalog it's got that Toshiba girl on it I don't know if she's actually a famous um, like idol or anything but she does appear in quite a few of those um, pamphlets there we go, the SS, SF5 and the creamy color with the pink band across the top. I really like those. SF15, very small version of the SF5, um, well, same family. It looks pretty cool with the red and blue bands on them. But um, it's very expensive, that's about $100, just like that. I mean, more like $150. Hey, look, another brochure. Toshiba, they spelt it wrong there in English. Don't blame them. Toshiba girl again on the pamphlet. All right, so let's take a look at what we've opened. So over here we got the Sony CFSW600, as I mentioned before, twin tape equalizer. Let's take a look at the equalizer here. So that's pretty cool. Got these little switches everywhere. There is a an international version and a Japanese version. This one, of course, is Japanese, so it's got the kanji and katakana writing everywhere. In the international version, it doesn't have these cool um, blue accents and 
the design is slightly different for the um, decals stickers. So um, just something I wanted to talk about is the satellite speakers. So I mentioned it a couple times, just give me a second and I'll open a picture of the CFW600. Is it? So this one here, still Japanese model you can tell because of all the blue stickers everywhere. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Got an aerial, got a handle at the back with Sony logo, so it's portable, takes D sized batteries, and boom. The speakers actually disconnect by a switch, and you can put them wherever you like. When you want to move the unit again, just clip them back on, and away you go. So that's something really interesting that I haven't seen on many audio systems lately. Now, next one here. So, this one, it's more of um, an anime fan sort of thing. It is a cool unit, but um, one of my friends is really into Kyoto animation, and I saw in um, one of their shows one of these made an appearance. And I'll bring up some screenshots soon. This one's very cool, got the original stickers from the factory. Next one here, VZ V2, otherwise known as the V2000 overseas. It's um, got a cult following because it's, an, it's a vinyl record player. It's got two speakers here, two tweeters up the top, and you slot your vinyl records into here and get to play them on the go. Sony did something similar called the um, Flamingo, but the Flamingo is quite rare and very expensive. The vinyl plays out in the open, could even be called a portable player. So this one, RTF, I mean RTSF4, this is quite rare, I've been looking at the auctions for about a month and haven't actually found any of these before, I've only seen them in the brochures. This one, very thin design, very cool looking, it is beige and yeah, I don't really like the colour. I saw an SF3 once and SF3 actually looks a lot better in my opinion. Over here, this one, SW3 or SW6. It's a very cool unit, pink and cayenne everywhere, black unit with silver um, chrome highlights around. What I really like about it is um, this here, it's better in this picture. The equalizer is three switches, all pink, cayenne accent on top, looks very synth wave, very cool. Too bad this one's not in good condition, looks like two buttons are broken, many scratches around, and apparently it doesn't work, 1000 yen, so what's that, like $15 Australian. I wanted one of these as well, SX3, so satellite speakers again, not quite as popular as the Sony, but um, because they weigh about 5 or 6 kg, shipping would cost too much and it would be uneconomical to buy one. And over here we have the brochures for Toshiba. So Toshiba Girl, I don't actually know her name, just seen her in all the brochures, use the same person, SW7, looking very good there. SW3, I think that's what that one was before, SW3, SX77, SF7, so this is one of my favourite ones here, especially in red, 35,800 yen it says, that's about $515, SF4, <coughs> so we've got the light green, uh, cream and red, looks pretty cool, Santa Monica Boulevard, and Walkie, so um, yes of course they copied Sony Walkman and made a Walkie. Next one, here's the same girl, different hairstyle. Got one shoulder out of the collar, as was the style in the 80s. What's that, it's 61, so 1986. <coughs> Showa 61. Uh, Bokurano Private Sound Walkie. So, yep, Walkie. As I said before, copy of a Walkman. So, SW9 over here. I don't know what this is, it's like a dictaphone. And SF12, we looked at those just before. Pretty expensive for what they are. SF15, never seen one of those. SX55, I wanted one of those as well, but there was only one that was paint faded. Let's move on to the next one. So this one's a National Kangaroo. Very quirky, very cool. And I like these a lot, so pretty much, as you can see here, it pops out and becomes its own Walkman. You just pop it back into the dock and you've got a full radio stereo speaker for your um, cassette player. Now this one's another one of my favourites, the Sony W60 or W90, what is it, W90. 
So what I really like about them is that they got this cool little equalizer over here, full equalizer on a twin tape cassette player. A mobile thing, I'll bring up a photo again of one that looks really good. So this one was about $150, I didn't want to spend that much so I'm not going to buy it, but it looks so good in red. This one's really good condition, you can see the equalizer again. And apparently there's videos of this one working, and they look really good when they're working. This one, National. So this is pretty much the National version of the um, SF5, SF15. Very cool this one, full black VHUHF um, receiver for TV. So back in the 80s it was a thing that people in Japan wanted to listen to the TV and to watch it. So these um, radios have a function where you can tune into TV bands. Unfortunately in New Zealand they've already gotten rid of that sort of thing and TV's all digital. Um, what I like about this is the pink and blue accents along it. I think it looks just really cool. Lots of um, kanji writing on it. Television sound, pink and blue again, nice switches. Very good condition this one, black. Um, if I hadn't already bought something then I probably would be buying this. It's only a thousand yen so that's about $15 I think, 15 to 20 And this one here, another really cool, really quirky one. It looks like a satellite speaker system, but it's actually not. But um, what's really cool about it, uh, two things. One is this level indicator here. Looks like the tachometer on a Z10 Sora. Same design, cross-hatching um, squares over a little arced um, LED indicator. And on the left here you've got um, an LED light showing um, I don't know what that is here, probably milliseconds, but in the car that's where the speedometer would be. And of course the um, tape deck actually pops out just like the kangaroo and you get your own walkie or walkman. So that pretty much does it for the tape decks that I've been looking at. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you ever want to um, kill time and find some cool interesting products in Japan, I highly recommend just searching up junk and seeing what pops up. You never know what you'll find.